if this is hit I know it's hard to take but her mind has been made up She didn't want your virginity that would be our, because you know, it, it, it's a, because men talk about things like that in a really stupid way. I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to have to lower the tone here by talking about ranking, but I'm going to because <laughs> it's essential. People like it, reviewers don't, but people like it. <laughs> because it is, a, it is a confusing time for a guy. The reason, well, the reason I talk about it, I don't talk about it for the men. I talk about it for the ladies because I think the ladies need to look because. When men are sort of starting out in going doing stuff like that, you know, ladies, you're taking, we don't get any attention or any help because ladies, you're getting all that because you're going through your period. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I can't help it. That's how I say it. I'm a man. I'm not, I can't say it in that context. I can say long period of time, but I got she's on a. Because <laughs> <laughs> and don't get me wrong, ladies, I'm not trying to make out that having a period is anywhere near as much fun as having a wank. But. <laughs> I've never had one, I wouldn't know. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, right, you know, like you, at least when you go through your period, girls, at least you get a bit of help. At least you get a bit of support. There's that time when you're a young girl and you run down the stairs, I'm hemorrhaging! No, darling, come here. <laughs> it's okay. You know, I could, when, I was, when I was 11 years old, I couldn't walk out of my room and go, Dad, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> it's been like it for hours! <laughs> Couldn't do that, but when you finally figure it out, it's a lot of fun, isn't it? <laughs> What's your name, sir? Duncan. 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 How are you? How How are you now, Duncan? I'm 31. You're 31. So it's, the, ranking is meaningless to you now, Duncan. You're at the same thing. It means nothing to you anymore. It's just a basic function. It's just there. That's all it's for, isn't it? Do you remember how old you were, Duncan, when you, first, you had your first one? <laughs> You don't, you don't. I mean, a lot, a lot of guys don't. A lot of guys don't. It's a very delirious time. But I mean, the great thing about it, the great thing about having your first one, is you don't, and I think all the men would agree with me on this one. You don't need pornography and filth or erotica. You've got your mum's Grattan's catalogue. It's great, right? <laughs> well, I had Grattan's. Maybe you were Freeman's. Little bit. Burns. Everyone's got a personality, haven't they? Right. So, and you open up the catalogue. You get that tingling. Do you remember that tingling feeling? You, 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 you don't get it anymore, do you? Oh, God, you know, it's not sort of going down your legs and going all around here. Got <laughs> <laughs> this weird demons behind you. <laughs> and it's really scary, there's blood pumping, adrenaline rush, and you think it's really sexy, and I want more of this, it's a little bit scary, but God almighty, oh and the weird thing is you're only looking at the lawnmowers. <laughs> <laughs> you're thinking, fuck this, yeah. you, you think it's a bit weird, but why waste it? You're all in the middle. Look at the grass collecting trail. <laughs> I'll never get that in the shape of <laughs> one. And some men, I mean, this is, a, this is a thing that troubles a lot of men. Um, some men never sort of grow out of that, that sort of, not wanking over lawnmowers, you grow out of that. <laughs> 23, it's gone, oh. right? <laughs> you, you get out of that, friend. some men spend their lives trying to ca ca capture, recapture that feeling, and try and get that feeling back, that first sort of feeling, that first rush. And it's not an uncommon thing. I bet every bloke in this room has got at least one mate who takes wanking a little bit too seriously. If you haven't got that mate, then it's you. You've got loads now, they're never in the room, funnily enough. But, but they do to either mate when I was 19 years old, his name was Terry. He was the king of the over-elaborate wank. I mean, he put so much fucking effort into it, it was ridiculous, right? He's come in every few days and regale us with the thing he figured out the night before. And he comes up to me, I'm standing outside at uh, uh, college, it was like Monday morning, 8 o'clock, I'm, I'm eating like a, a breakfast baguette, okay? And this is what happens, Terry comes over to me, Rich, why have you wank with? Right? That's how he started the conversation. Not <laughs> hello, good morning, nothing logical, no. Why have you wank with? And I was a bit nonplussed, I'm like, well, I'm, I'm right handed. And he went, right, figure this out last night. Next time you're having a wank, don't use your right hand, use your left hand. Because it feels like a woman's doing it. <laughs> and you're laughing, he's right, I did it, it's fucking shit. <laughs> I love it, there's a lady in the front recording that, it's brilliant. <laughs> Is that your technique? Is that why it's not working out? <laughs> Come on, Bert, get your coffee out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to, I mean, you, you, 
you take in that in good spirit, but I mean, some, I mean, I don't want to sound like I'm having a go lady, but men get the fucking jit over this thing. We get a go, and you know, every bloke, I'm sure, you know, Duncan, I'm sure you've been in this village before. <laughs> you know, I'm sure that, and if, you're, if there's young blokes here around, you know, you will do eventually, you'll be with that one woman, and you think, oh, your hand's going down, you think, this is going to be fucking incredible. And she basically thinks she's giving you a blood pressure examination. Right? <laughs> it's, like, it's like she's going on a ride in all the towers. Right, so I've got a hold of his cock as tightly as I possibly can. The end is throbbing, he's the same colour as my dog's. Right, now... Okay. <laughs> Blood's coming out the end. I'm going to basically couple this with the soothing rhythmic tones as if I were trying to get the last bit of sauce out of the bottle. <laughs> She looks up at me again, you have to suck tears back into your mouth. It's the only liquid leaving you at that moment. Like, well, you enjoying that? Yeah. Shall I suck it for you? No, 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 no. <laughs> so we do get it, we do get a bit of stick over it. Yeah, and some women, but some women, when I tell that joke about the left-handed wife, some women get really shitty about it. And it's always a particular, you ladies take it in really good spirit, and most women do, they realise it's a joke, it's, it's perfectly true, but it's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> but basically you get some women who really don't like that joke, and there's a particular sort of woman, that, you don't get them anymore really, they, they're the sort of women you used to get on Jerry Springer, they basically can't talk to you without we've given you out of this fucking business. What's the <laughs> Everything they say has got, they've got some sort of weird condition, jive epilepsy. <laughs> Motown Parkinson's or something. <laughs> I was doing that joke once, and I said to this, this woman at the front, I said the left-handed brain joke, this woman went, excuse me. It's very funny, and it might be true, but at the end of the day, I think you need to realise, okay, that when it's your turn, when it's the bloke's turn to do it for the women, you're not much better at it. <laughs> and I said, you're right, though. You're absolutely right. I'm not going to disagree with you on that. That's a perfectly valid point. Men are just as bad when it comes to doing it for women. But ladies, there's ladies here. Ladies, let me ask you a question. Do I really have to come out here and tell you what men are crap at in bed? <laughs> Do I really have to come on this stage every fucking day? Even if it was just to be fucking fair, do I have to come out here and tell you the erotic failings of man? <laughs> no, I don't have to do that. I don't do my girls. Do you know why I don't? It's because you've already fucking told everyone that I'm <laughs> Every bastard from here to Tim Luck fucking two knows everything! <laughs> God forbid, Duncan, you've probably been in this position. <laughs> when you're in bed with a woman, you're in bed with a woman, and you make a mistake. <laughs> you make a mistake, Duncan. Do you know why you made a mistake, Duncan? It's because you're a human being. <laughs> you're not a fucking robot, okay? <laughs> you make a mistake, you possibly you might fail to turn up. <laughs> arrive too early. <laughs> you might try and go into the house through the wrong door. <laughs> Whatever you do, in the morning you're going to feel vulnerable, you're going to feel insecure, you're going to feel fragile. Because you're a human being. <laughs> and these... <laughs> give you that Oscar winning performance. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's not a big deal. <laughs> it happens to a lot of people. <laughs> it doesn't bother me, so it shouldn't bother you. Within an hour, Duncan, your mum knows everybody knows. <laughs> She's set up a MySpace page at Facebook. She's emailed the Pentagon. She's got the red arrows to spill it out in bed, smoking a fucking sky. You come home from work that day, embarrassed as fuck. You turn on the TV. Panorama, there's Michael Burke. Last night, Duncan failed to perform sexually. <laughs> we ask the question, is he a fag or what? <laughs> Nice guy, gonna be a nice guy.
<laughs> they were a bit more subtle. They just looked like regular normal bars. Now, this couple came in. They'd been there for an hour. And I think he'd noticed there was a lot of things his brain couldn't compute happening around him, like a lot of beard-on-beard beard action going on, okay? That was just some of the lesbians, right? And, he's, I mean, <laughs> and so he's, he's feeling, probably felt a bit, a bit, well, this is a bit unusual. So he went up to the bar where I was, and he said, excuse me, is this a gay bar? I said, well, it's not a gay bar or such, it's a gay-friendly, it's the PC term. You know, anyone can come here and drink, just like any other bar. But we do have a lot of gay clientele. They come and go as they please. And he asked me the weirdest question. He said, I'm here with my wife. Will we feel uncomfortable at any time? <laughs> <laughs> well, not if you use some lubricant, sir. I've got some back here. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think was going to happen? It's 8 o'clock, it's fisting time! Come on, everyone grab it. Oh, my God, what do you think was going to happen? And it's weird in the nature of homophobia, because there's one theory about homophobia, that if you're homophobic, if you're a bloke and you're homophobic, it's because you've got suppressed homosexual urges. I'm sure we might have heard this theory. If you're homophobic, it's because you've got gay desires in your body and they're shameful to you. So they manifest in a hatred of gay people. There's lots of evidence to prove that this might be the case. There's even evidence to suggest that Hitler was a homosexual. Which, you know, might sound a bit shocking, but when you think about it, you know, all the leather boots and all this fucking business. And... <laughs> See, Kyle? Yes, sure, love, yeah. Swastika looks like an anus. Anyone else? That... No, forget it. Now. <laughs> But, you know, there's a recent case, this is brilliant, there's a recent case in America, a guy called Ted Haggard, who was, uh, he's the leader of the American Evangelical Church, right? Big fucking church in America. He was the head of the leader of the, uh, the American Church of Evangelicals. Notoriously homophobic. Gets caught by his wife, being shagged in the arse by a 17-year-old Romanian red boy, while smoking crystal meth and wanking over gay porn. No, I have a lot of respect for this guy, because I think if you're going to do something wrong, we'll fucking do it right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when do you have a gay porn? Not enough. Smoking crystal meth as well? Possibly. 17-year-old red boy fucking you in the arse. That's the fucking ticket. <laughs> <laughs> and he got caught by his wife, and you just know what happened, didn't you? He's there, Eastern European land, he's, a, he's got his crystal meth pipe, he's smoking it, he's wanking over gay porn, and you just know that his wife walked in and he went, this isn't what it looks like. <laughs> he followed the Fuhrer. Our blood is purer We've never been so sure That AIDS is the gay cure We worship an old crazy motherfucker called Hitler His book mine cast man that was the shit yeah You wanna be right then you gotta be white If you choose to be black then Nazis will take your ass But not like a queer Another man's dick can't wouldn't go near we're white, we're no, there's a lot of Muslim hysteria in the world at the moment, particularly in this country, it's rife. And um, I think it's, you, know, you hear this a lot, but it is genuinely true. You know, that the, it's only a small percentage of Muslims who are fucking it up for the rest of them. You know, there's two million Muslims in this country, and they're not all, you know, they're not all that like that. And I can prove that because I went to, um, I'm sure you all remember uh, about 18 months ago, a guy in Denmark got in trouble when he drew a cartoon of the Prophet Muhammad. I'm sure you all remember that. Big no-no. Mohammed doesn't like cartoons being drawn of him, apparently. And so, around the world, there was a lot of you know, major incidents. But in this country, well, not in this country, it was in, it was in London. Um, there was, a, there was a, a protest in London. And I went along to see it, to see what the big fuss was. And it was a really nice protest. It was really dignified. It was really peaceful. A lot of honour, a lot of respect. All wearing the Muslim gear, all wearing their, with their banners, Union Jacks and what have you. And I thought, this is really nice. But there was one bloke there who fucked it all up for everyone. He was a Daily Mail journalist's wet dream, this guy. Because he'd made a banner like everyone else had. I don't think he'd thought it through, though. Mm -hmm. See if you can spot the mistake. You might have even seen this. He had a banner that said, Behead all those who say Islam is violent. <laughs> <laughs> Behead all those violent. How? <laughs> this is what pissed me off. There were thousands of people on this march. I can't believe one of them didn't go, Imran, for fuck's sake, mate, come over here, bro. <laughs> It's a tax counterproductive, okay? You wouldn't do, you, know, you wouldn't do this at any other point. You wouldn't go to a protest with a banner that said, "Stop paedophilia, shoot children." It kind of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a lie, mate. Go on and have a make poverty history. Let's nuke Africa. It kind of. <laughs> it kind of steps on the point there, really. But I mean, what annoys me about this situation, this Muslim hysteria, is it always gets based around the most irrelevant. People are almost pushed into the most irrelevant argument. In this case, it's the veil. That's what we all argue about, isn't it? The fact if women didn't have cloths over their faces, 9-11 wouldn't have happened. That's basically it. I mean, I don't get the veil personally. I don't really understand why you want to wear a veil, but if you want to, that's fair enough. You know, I think if God wanted you to wear it, cover your face, he'd have put an extra flap of skin over your nose. <laughs> Who are we to defy God, quite frankly, right? But, you know, you do get people who are sucked into this 
Muslim hysteria argument over the veil. And they sort of, they get sucked into this. And I just think, you know, at the end of the day, I, if you, and there might be people need, there might be good, decent, honest, kind-hearted souls, but you do get into this veil hysteria. And I can change your mind right now by giving you a simple scenario. You're walking down the street late at night, no one else is around. On this side of the street, you've got a little Muslim woman in the full veil. On this side of the street, you've got some 14-year-old council estate imp with his hood up and his baseball cap there, socks tucked into his fucking tracksuit, what for mini jumpers they are, he's, he's dribbling and texting because he's forgotten how to fucking think for himself, so he's, he's texting himself there. And what side of the street are you going to walk on? I don't know about you, I'm with the little Muslim bitch over here. Right? <laughs> I don't give a fuck if she's dressed like a gothic Dalek, that's her business. <laughs> I'm walking me around, I'll tell you why, because at some point that little cunt's going to pull a knife out, and when he does, I'm going to kill him, stupid cunt there. So, you know, you don't need to worry about it. But, you know, going to the other side of the street now, moving on from there, talk about the hoodies, because hoodies are an interesting thing, because, you know, in, in the old days, you know, they're not a new thing, in the old days they'd have been called rascals, or, you know, ragamuffins, and things like that. Now they're just called, you know, hoodies and chaps, and I think instead of sort of giving these kids a badge of honour with an ASBO, which is how they treat these fucking things, we should be trying to think of a solution to how we can stop these, but they're just unfortunate. They're not stupid, they're just unfortunate. And, you know, you've got to talk to these kids in a language they can understand. And uh, a lot of these kids listen to rap music which um, I don't know if anyone here is into, and there's a rap collective in the UK uh, I was listening to a little while ago, and they're called the So Solid Crew. Yeah, a few, few lines. So I'm giggling at that already. That's, a, that's how shit the So Solid Crew is. It's a great thing. If you're into comedy, you don't have to write a joke. You just come and say, you go, So Solid Crew. <laughs> Good night. And then you walk over. <laughs> well, they released a song in this country. It was called 21 Seconds. It's uh, six minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, there's a lot, if you haven't heard of the social crew, this is how crap the social solid crew are. They're a rap group, there's 25 of them, none of them have been shot. <laughs> <laughs> how shit do you have to be? Right? There's more to aim at, one of them must have fucking, you know, anyway. But they released this song, 21 Seconds, there's a line at the end of that song, one of the rappers, he goes, Tool multiply by 10 plus 1. Which is 21. <laughs> now, there must have been one kid, surely, somewhere, millions of people bought this record. There must have been one kid who didn't have a fucking clue what 2 times 10 plus 1 was. Did he, if he'd have got that in his hand, he'd have been fucked. He didn't have a clue. What's that? I don't have a clue. But now we can go, I know what this is. I listen to the So Solid Crew, okay? A star off to Oxford, okay? Now, what we need to do is get rid of people like the So Solid Crew. We need a more positive rap group, the So Science Crew, who are a gang of elite, hardcore, mental rude boys who rap mathematical equations into garage music and the kids who remember them, they do better at school, it's staying in their heads. I think it's a good idea, do you think? It'd be great to come out and go, yo, yo, check this, yo, what's square root 49? Yo, what's square root 49? Yo, what's square root 49? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that's square root 49. Seven, that's square root 49. Yo, tell me the Pythagoras theory. Yo, what's that Pythagoras theory? Yo, tell me the Pythagoras theory. It's the sum of the square root of any two sides of a right triangle. Is it the square root of the domain, of the domain, of the domain inside you <laughs> Enough in rap music, game, would you? The deep bow at the end. <laughs> Snoop Dogg comes out and goes, I think not. <laughs>
It's a bit out of order, really. I mean, it's a, it's a little bit. You talk about being politically correct. It's a little bit out of order. You wouldn't, you wouldn't do that with any other disease, would you? You wouldn't do that with anything else. And if I said to the guy, it's, it's, this isn't like TV, you know. I can't hear you. I can't. There's no red button for fucking interactive. This is. I know when you're having a chat during Coronation Street, this batter you just go, would you shut the fuck up? But I will. Right? Oh, brilliant. I don't even remember the joke. It's me in this now. It's gone. <laughs> fuck the joke. Let's just fucking say that. There's a setting here about going in Hull. And. <laughs> oh no. Don't be I've got unfinished business here. I'm not there this <laughs> I haven't suffered for seven years to so let this fat ball fuck ruin it all the Sorry? Did I have enough of him the first time? I could never get enough of him, madam. The, the light of the, the sun bouncing off that head gave me arc eye during the bubble. I was involved in a welder's mask and a pair of sunglasses. So. I wish every audience could be like you, then I wouldn't have to waste my time writing shit. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the funniest news story, I'll talk about this. I saw the funniest news story on Sky News two days ago. It was a, this was delivered as a piece of bad news, right? You know they like doing these stories about how life in prison is so cushy and lovely and wonderful. This was the result. Was, results of a recent survey have shown that life in British prisons is so good that the prisoners don't even want to try and escape. <laughs> good! I don't want some fucking Nazareth Red 12 dogs and eating his family trying to come and play fucking gear. I want him to stay there for fuck's sake. I want him left. If, if, if it stops me getting, getting skinned alive and bugged on the way home, I say, fuck it, give Peter Sutcliffe an Xbox. That'll be good. <laughs> like this. People tend to come up to you and go, but your toes go all the way to the end of the moment. And what I tend to say is, yes, but my legs end there. <laughs> but, but I walk on stage. Now, I don't know if this is the best or the worst heckle, but I don't think it's ever going to get topped. I walk on stage, first gig ever in Northern Ireland, and I walk on stage, as I am now, half man, half magic wand, and I walk on stage. <laughs> I buy a rotary field with a haircut and I walked on stage, but I haven't even said anything. I just got to the mic and this bloke in the front row goes, Excuse me! In that typical sort of Northern Irish accent, sort of half of an and a rape alarm basically. And, and he, he goes, Excuse me! Are you gay? <laughs> Which, when you get asked that question with that level of aggression, it kind of sort of throw you a bit. And I, I didn't say yes or no, and there's no, there's no point. So I just looked at the guy and said, why do you think I'm gay? And this is what he said. Because you look like you've got it! <laughs> <laughs> Don't act shocked, this fucking really happened. This is true life. I'm on stage in front of people. Fucking this happened. Because I look like I've got AIDS. And I couldn't... The problem I think I hated about that heckle is I can't do anything about it because it's true. I can't deny it. This is why you laughed when I said it. You went, it does, yeah. I was trying to... It does look like he's got AIDS. I had Bruce Springsteen playing in my head. I couldn't get it out. I don't know why. I didn't fucking know why. So I'm stumped at this point, and this motherfucker sat there. He's asked me this question. About 10 seconds went by, and he sat there and went, I went, oh, fuck it. So I spat in his mouth, and I fell. Hey! Woo! He came and the bitch didn't wash me hands. <laughs> Sometimes you, see, sometimes you come up with a brilliant heckle put down by it, but it's not funny at the time. Because I this guy heckle me, I'll do it in clapper. And that's it. There we go. Is that what you do? Is it just swatch out? There we go, we're ready. I had this guy in the front row, and he's one of these guys who just, I mean, you, know, you might have experienced these people before, these people who sit at the front and just don't shut the fuck up. <laughs> I mean, this time, he was there to ruin the night. He was sat in the front, but he was sat in the front just off to the left. 
this guy and this guy's and this guy's there, and he's just interrupting every little fucking bit, every little bit. And I went up there and I had enough. And I went, excuse me, mate, would you shut the fuck up? And he looked at me and went, no. But when he looked at me, he looked off, he wasn't looking at me, he was looking off to the side. For a minute, I thought, he had one of the, do you remember when you were at school you had one teacher who had one of those funny fucking eyes that went up and but you never knew which one was which and they try and bollock you and then you try to line up with the other eyes circle it the fuck up in the, in the middle of the classroom. But I thought you can't have two eyes like that, both of them. And I said, why don't you look, why don't you look at me? And he goes, because I'm blind. And, and I, well, I was like, what, this is this true? What proper blind? He was a bloke, I thought he was exaggerating, just you know, to amp it up. I went, what proper blind? He went, yeah, I can't see a thing. I went, well, if you're blind, what the fuck are you sitting in the front row for, you selfish bastard? There's, 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 there's people with good eyesight at the back, straight in a fucking seat, you're taking up the fucking front. You're supposed to have good fucking hearing. If you were that intelligent, you'd be the state outside of the foyer, you fucking heard the big chest as well. Save the fucking fiber. Yeah, that's the reaction I fucking got. Reaction I fucking got. Fuck him, he's disabled and he's a cunt. That makes us worse, you know. With me, you know, I do look like I'm dying. This is kind of a look, this is a look I've got. People are always worrying I look ill, I'm not. This is just, some people look suave, chiseled, slim, athletic. I'm like the next, size zero, I'm the next one down. I'm terminal, right, that's it. <laughs> I'm life support machine, I'm chemo sheep, right? <laughs> Hey, no, people, hey, people take the piss, so no, I went to Disneyland two years ago, shaved me and got it for fuck all. I don't think... Yeah. Second hand wheelchair, bollocks from the queue, put the wigs on, get the little wigs, put them on the dying kids, fuck it, I'm not getting in front, there we go. But there's several other problems, there's several other problems with that, and the first problem is this, um, the other problem, I don't mind being single, for several reasons, I'm, I'm not very good in a relationship. Um, for several, two main reasons. Number one, uh, I'm shitty pet. I know that's a weird thing to announce to a group full of strangers, but I just, it's clear that I am shitty pet. My problem is longevity, in that, well, I don't know what it is, I figured that bit out yet. Last, short longevity, I'm struggling with short at the moment. Fuck, fuck longevity. Like, it's, it's, it's quite bad. Hang on, the other day, this is how bad it is. The other day I was having a wank and I came so quickly I apologised to myself after that. <laughs> Well, I say myself, I mean, everyone else in the swimming pool as well, you know? I mean, <laughs> all their carers and things like that. <laughs> well, uh, being crap in bed, now... Is <laughs> it This guy, this is an admission that I actually said ten minutes ago, which shows how much fucking attention you've been paying. He's <laughs> not a bit slow, he's fucking stopped. He's, he's fucking stationary. <laughs> Archaeologists on Time Team will dig this fucker up in a few years time. <laughs> You've actually reversed man's development, sir. In five million, when they dig you up in five million years, they'll go, this is how they ended up back in the fucking sea, isn't it? <laughs> Guys, it's been a pleasure. Take care of one It's Richard Coughlin! Good evening! Hello! You okay? No, no, you're not. Fantastic. Right, that's one. That's all. So, I'm actually in a good mood. I, two weeks ago, I finally got on the property ladder in London. Well, I found, a, I found a fucking unused greenhouse in an allotment in Clapham. That 1400 a month is not too bad. But I've, I recently found, they say people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. I've recently worked out it's not a good idea to wank during the day, either. <laughs> and mop it up with the neighbour's cat. They just really don't... It is nice, but I've, I've, it's good to be back in London because I did my first, I'll tell you this story, it was about a month ago I did my first gig in Northern Ireland in a town called Derry. Anyone from Northern Ireland? No, can't be bothered. No, good. <laughs> there was barely anyone there either, but I was, I, was, I got, I don't know if this is the worst or the best heckle I've ever fucking got, but it was, it was, this actually happened, this is a completely true story. I walked on stage, as I am now, half man, half biro refill, basically, and... <laughs> I haven't even got to the fucking stage, and this I walk up to the microphone, bloke at the front goes, EXCUSE ME! Right, in that, 
understated Northern Irish accent. It's like a cross between a leprechaun and a rape alarm, basically. Is the, uh, he goes, excuse me, are you gay? I was a bit, you know, there's, no, there's no yes or no, you don't need no right answer. I just looked at him and said, why do you think I'm gay? This is what he said, because you look like you've got AIDS. <laughs> yeah, laugh it up, yeah, fucking. I'm on stage in front of people and it's the worst heckle for me because it's fucking true. I can't even deny it, right? That's why you laughed when you're fucking, I'm look, I stand there, 10 seconds, absolute silence. And I looked at the guy and he started going, hey, hey, I thought, fuck you. So I spat in his mouth and that... <laughs> that's a heckle put down for you there. It's the next six weeks of your life fucking ruined, isn't it, right? But the thing is, the guy had a point. I do look like I'm dying. This is like my sort of thing. You know, there's like size zero. I'm the I'm, like, I'm terminal chic. This is like, you know, chemo style, I like to call it. It's a, don't take the day. People take the piss. It, it, it's saved me a lot of money. My mates used to take the piss. We went to Disneyland two years ago. I shaved my head. I got in for fuck all. It was incredible. But, <laughs> But I, I do just look—I do just look ill all the time. This is just the, the look I've always—I've always had. And I, not to say, I'm nothing wrong with me, but that's not to say I'm healthy. I mean, I, I smoke 18 bajillion cigarettes an hour. Who, who here smokes smokes a lot? Anyone? There's a few. They're all dead. See, it's just me fucking. I don't even know. I don't, I mean, do anyone smoke? Give us a cheer. Yeah. Yeah, there's a few. There's a few of you. I mean, the problem I've got with smoking nowadays is, uh, first thing, the warnings on the packet. I'm not going to moan about the warnings themselves, but they're getting a bit aggressive these days. The warnings. They're getting a little bit angry at you. I bought a packet of cigarettes the other day. It just said, you are a cunt. That's all it said, right? <laughs> and I turned it over. There was a picture of my mum crying next to a tombstone. I thought... <laughs> and it's a, it's a bullshit thing anyway, the health one. The only reason, where are the Americans? We've got some in here, haven't we? Yeah, over there, yeah. I mean, it's because of you, it's because of you, because you did the thing you always do best. You sued the tobacco companies years ago, and that's what, because you needed someone to tell you that breathing in huge lungfuls of smoke was fucking bad. And I, this is where common sense kicks in. There's no warning on my toaster saying, when toaster is on, do not insert penis. You know, I don't... <laughs> I don't need these things. Don't fall asleep in the oven, you might have a bad day tomorrow. You know, it's like... But, you see, but that's why you've got the warnings there, because but I, you know, we live in such a litigious society. You get the warnings, and I've got my phone here. It just says, smoking kills, smoking fucking kills. You smoke and you die. Smoking kills. Right? But I, we live in such a sort of, everyone's trying to sue everyone for anything these days. I reckon it's going to go the other way around. Smoking kills. What if it doesn't kill me? Right? Let's say, uh, tomorrow I go to the doctors, he tells me I've got some disease, it's terminal, I'm going to be dead in six weeks, and I would have got it whether I smoked or not. At that point, shouldn't I legally have the right to sue the tobacco company under Trades Descriptions Act for selling me a fucking product that didn't do what it fucking said, right? <laughs> I want to be the first guy to sue a tobacco company for not getting cancer, right? <laughs> But I, I, this is the thing, and also looking like this, it's hard to pull, it's hard, it's hard to pull, it's impossible, really. I, I can't take a certificate, health certificate, every single time. And, I'm, I'm, I don't, and if I don't go and a woman shows a bit of interest, I'm a little bit dubious of her. Because I think she's just looking at me and thinking, you know, he looks like he's got what I've got, fuck it, let's go for it, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not trusting that, right? You know, and there's several reasons I, I, I have these problems with, you know, first of all, I, I, I'm shit in bed. That's the, that's the first thing, I'd like to clear that up now, right? That's a, it's not even a joke, it's perfectly... Don't R me, you fucking... You wouldn't fuck me. <laughs> no, you wouldn't, would you? No, yeah. Don't go, you all would. Oh, fair enough. Right, but this, look at these shoes, I can't be too picky. Now, anyway. But no, this is the thing, I, I, I can't... I, I'm crappy. My problem is longevity. Well, it's not even longevity, it's short-jevity. It I can't... It's just, bang, it's over, gone. Just fucking gone, gone, three seconds over, right? And, you know, and it's just, I'll tell you how bad it is. The other day I was masturbating, I came so quickly, I apologised to myself afterwards. That's how, and everyone else in the swimming pool, obviously, you know, but the, the, <laughs> Well, I, had, I mean, I hate it, it's a bit of a negative term, I hate it. Premature ejaculation. It's like, you know, I don't, there's no bloke in here who's ever had a premature ejaculation. It's, it's enthusiastic, you know, it's... <laughs> It might be inconvenient for the others who are currently in the room with you at the time, but 
it's just, and I hate the fact it's always on me. The onus is always on me. It's like, you know, the woman's always like, oh, God, why can't you fucking go slower and last longer? Fuck you, why can't you hurry up? This is like, let's negotiate here. <laughs> Girls, I ask any woman here, if you could come after three seconds, would you try to not fucking do... No, you fucking wouldn't, right? Don't persecute me because I'm more highly evolved. There is, it doesn't... Uh, the other problem is I've, uh, I've got a small penis. That's the other problem. It's, um, it, it works. I mean, it's there. It works. It's nothing to write home about, you know. Not that you would anyway. I mean, you wouldn't. There's a bit of a weird letter to write home, that one. Isn't it? <laughs> Dear Mum, I have a big cock. Love, Richard. That's just... I mean, you probably would anyway, but fuck it. No, but this is... I do have a small, but I think the world would be better if, if, if like, every bloke had a small dick. There'd be several advantages to it. If every bloke had a tiny cock, there'd be several advantages to this system, right? First of all, you'd get rid of those. Most blokes who brag about the size of their cock are liars, right? But every bloke here has got that one mate who just needs no excuse just to whip it out and fucking show you it and dance around an aeroplane. And look at the fucking size of that. My dick's fucking huge. Look at that fucking dick. I have to use a Pringle tube for a condom. Look at that fucking... It's fucking... Look at that. My dick, when it's fully on, when it's full on, that's on the slab. When it's full, it's 18 inches long and it's 15 inches round. I'm like, yeah, what? So's a baby. I've never seen a woman enjoy having one of them pulled out of her. For... <laughs> women don't give fuck. Oh, that's fantastic. He's nearly there, Mrs. Johnson. No, fucking push him in. Push the fuck up. Put a crash helmet on him for fuck's sake. Wrap him. You don't want to, and you, people worry too much about. I mean, I've got some people, but you can get too carried away. I've got, I've got one mate. Is a, his name's Terry. His name's. He's, he's a, he's a lovely bloke. But the problem with Terry is, he's what I call a, a, a wank connoisseur. He's, he, you know, if they had wank soirees, he'd be the head guy with the biggest top hat, right? He's, he's, an, he's an enthusiast of masturbating. He is an onanist king. And the problem with him is, he gets far too carried away with it. And whenever I'm, whenever you end up going, being single, whenever I'm, I hang around with Terry, he's my single friend, right? And I hang around, and he invents new ways to fucking masturbate and to come up. He invents new things he can come up with. And this is the last one he gave me. You went, Rich, Rich, Rich. What hand do you wank with? He said, you know, okay. That's how he started the conversation, right? It's like, I'm right-handed. He went, right, next time you're having a wank, don't use your right hand, use your left hand. I said, why is that? Because it feels like a woman's doing it. I know you're laughing, but he's absolutely right. I did it that night. It was fucking shit. Right? But... <laughs> Some women clapping at the back. I like that. Like, yeah, we're fucking rubbish. We can't... Is that your technique? That might be why it's not working. <laughs> I always say, girls, if you, you know, if you, if you, if you feel that's unfair, you can prove me wrong afterwards. I'll be in the toilets way, and as you've already been told, it won't last long, and it's not going to take up too much effort. So we don't have to. Have a... Ladies and gentlemen, it's uh, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you tonight. It's been wonderful as always. Thank you very much. Take care. Good night.